Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim. This is not a video I was planning on making, but in the comments to my video on the SC Designs F16 update, a number of people suggested they were having problems with the update, making shot turns or doing loops or other maneuvers. And uh, I haven't been having the same kind of trouble, though I haven't been doing anything too fancy with it. And so I'm going to demonstrate some things and I'm going to talk about the basics of maneuvering just in case that might be uh, an issue here or maybe it is a difference between my version and the version that's on say Xbox or the marketplace because I get got it off of the just like website but I think that's unlikely though I do have this persistent G limit thing and I still have a duplication on the HUD when it comes to the, some of the data uh, showing up uh, so maybe maybe I've got some sort of messed up version that happens to work uh, I don't know but anyway just in case uh, let me try and fly it and talk about what I think about when it comes to the basics of maneuvering, doing loops and stuff like that, just to check that people are on the same page with that. And, you know, I have DC, DC, blah, I have DCS World and I have the F-16 there, but I'm, I haven't flown it much. And I'm definitely not a uh, pro at fighter jet maneuvers or anything like that. I'm very much... Uh, a civilian sort. I'm a test pilot more than anything else. So one thing I can tell you about the F-16 is that uh, it has a fly-by-wire system. That's this switch here. F-L-C-S. F-B-W is fly-by-wire. F-B-W. And so you can turn off the system like this or turn it on. Fly-by-wire system will limit what you can and can't do with the plane to some extent. So when it comes to maneuvering there are two things that I think about. And the first is the speed I'm going at, and the second is the angle of attack, which is, if you look at the HUD there, there's the little circle with the three lines going out of it that looks like a little plane, or if you're looking at a plane head-on, you know, there's the wing and the vertical stabilizer. That's actually the velocity vector, and the angle of attack is the difference between the crosshair, you know, the four lines, versus that velocity vector. And so the larger the angle is, the harder the plane, uh, the harder a time the plane has of keeping things stable. And so there is a limit to the angle of attack that the plane can sustain. And with the fly-by-wire on, the plane will stop you if you are trying to exceed that limit. So here we're also going very slow. You can see my velocity is at 130, 120. But that's all right, we're about to plunge into the ground anyway. Um, but, see, the thing about the loop is you have to make sure that you don't stray too far away from the velocity vector. So your angle of attack has to be limited. As long as your angle of attack is limited and you have enough velocity going into the loop, you can sustain the loop. If, however, you don't have enough velocity going into the loop, and I would say enough velocity in this case is 400 knots, then you're going to stall out and you're not going to be able to sustain the loop. So, sustaining the loop, and I've got sort of a lopsided loop here. I'm not doing it very well because I'm talking at the same time. But at the peak, you can't be below your stall speed. As long as you're plunging into the ground, you can be at your stall speed. But, um, so... It's just a matter of how far away from that velocity vector you are and how fast you're going. And otherwise you can just keep looping and looping and looping. Of course, you should be high enough so that at the bottom of the loop you are not plunging into the ground. It's good to sort of keep a stable angle of attack through the loop. So let, let's say I did try to force it. It'll do something like this. If I'm yanking up at the stick all the way, well, that's not a very nice loop, is it? So this is if I yanked all the way on the stick. Okay. So we can't do that. The limit's about 20 degrees as far as the difference between your your uh, velocity vector and the crosshair or the angle of attack. Um, it does, I'm trying to see, the angle of attack is written there, it's just jumbled up because my HUD has two different sets of information. 
But that's the number on there. It's the A. It's the A over here, if you can see that. Underneath the ground speed. The GS there, that's the ground speed. And then the A under it is the angle of attack. And so that shouldn't be more than 20. I mean, right now I'm only keeping it at 9. And then the G underneath it is the G force. So if I yank it really hard, it has trouble. So as far as turns are concerned, also there's a minimum speed for doing a turn. You don't need 400 knots for that. But it depends on how many G's you pull during the turn. The faster you're going, the more G's you're going to pull in a turn. So let me try for a 5G turn here. This is a 5G turn. You can see doing a 5G turn, we are also deviating from the velocity vector. So we're getting a high angle of attack. And so we lose speed. If you have a high angle of attack, you tend to lose speed. Unless you're plunging into the ground. So the 10 angle attack 10, I'm at four G's there. If I go trying to get more G's, I'm going a little bit slow to get more G's. If you go faster, you got to pull more G's when you turn. It's especially annoying to have this duplication of information because the numbers don't even agree with each other. I don't know. Okay, we are past Mach 1. So now when I turn, I get to 6 Gs very quickly without even trying to turn very hard. And I start blacking out. So even with a fairly mild 3 degree angle of attack, 6, uh, 7... 7G's, blacking out. So that's if you're going really fast. And of course if you try to yank it all the way, I wasn't yanking it all the way there at all. If you try to yank it all the way, it'll just go out of control. Especially if you have the flyby wire off. Well, the purpose of the flyby wire, and I have it off right now, is to stop you from getting it out of control. So... If I try to turn right now with the fly-by-wire and turn hard, I'm now I'm yanking it all the way. But it'll... and it actually actually goes past the G-limit anyway. So the fly-by-wire is not that great, actually. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what the fly-by-wire... Uh, in theory, it should probably G-limit G me, right? Fly-by-wire? Okay, well, anyway. So I don't know how the fly-by-wire in this particular version of the F-16 works. But anyway, with the fly-by-wire on, let me try the loop again. Maybe that's the pro problem people are having, but I doubt it. So again with the loop, I'm going to accelerate to 400 first. And probably get a little bit more height. In theory, you know, you should end up where you started as far as the height is concerned. But I'm, I'm, I'm doing these fairly sloppily from like fighter school standards, I'm sure. Okay, well, we're going a healthy amount of speed, and then I'm going to pull up fairly quickly. So I've got a high angle of attack, but not so much that it should fail. Right, 20 degrees is sort of our limit, so if we can look at the A number there, we'll just try and keep it within those limits. And beware of the tape on the HUD. Yeah, because of the way it flips around, it can be deceptive once you are at 90 degrees or close to it. Now here I stalled out there. That's why I hicked up, hiccuped and it wasn't a smooth. But the reason I sort of stalled was because I pulled away from the from the velocity vector too much. So I had a high angle attack there and so I lost speed and that's why I hicked up. It had a hiccup there because the flyby wires stopped it. If I turned the flyby wire off, it wouldn't do that hiccup. So again, uh, really strong. Now I'm pulling up all the way, but this time because of the flyby wire, it's not going to completely go crazy because that's the flyby wire's job to stop it. But it's also not going to do a very nice loop because the flyby wire is trying to stop it because I'm yanking it all the way and that's no good. 
because that we get too much of an angle attack like that. So I recover speed, and then now I'm going to do a nice loop <laughs> uh, instead of doing a loop that makes the fly-by-wire unhappy. But you can get away with uh, loops that would make the fly-by-wire unhappy if you just turn it off. But in general, it's better to just do a nice smooth loop at a constant angle attack that isn't exceeding 20. Okay, so I'm going to take the afterburner off and do a much more leisurely loop here. And this should be a fly-by-wire approved loop. Okay, another one. This one I'm a little bit slow on though. I again would want to start at 400 meters, uh, for 400 knots, not meters per second. But there I was a little bit slow, so up there, it, uh, the fly-by-wire sort of stopped me right there. But I think I can complete the loop, but yeah, because I was slow, there was a hiccup in the loop. So, I mean, that's about, I mean, for more complicated things like Immelman, Immelman's or other maneuvers, for every given maneuver for any given plane, there's a speed that you should be going at in order to execute it properly, and then a limit to how much you can yank on the stick to force the thing. And that's what I've been calling the angle of attack. The angle of attack is the limit to, is, I mean, the literal thing is the distance you are from the velocity vector. So the difference between the crosshair and that little plane icon on the HUD. But effectively, it's how much you're yanking on the stick. So just remember that there's a limit to how much you can yank on the stick for a particular maneuver at a given speed. And then you can execute the maneuvers that I think you're expecting to execute with the F-16. Uh, though sometimes it might be smoother if you just turn the fly-by-wire off. So, that's about all I have to say about that. Hopefully that helps people out there. I don't know if that was the problem or not, but I guess it bears mentioning as a tutorial sort of thing. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.